So hi, we're on the Good Noise Podcast here with Luna Aura. We're going to ask them some questions today. I'm going to start. So what inspired you to start making music? Um, You know, I've always had an affinity for music. I've always loved music. Um, I started singing when I was really young, like three, four, and then started writing songs when I was about 10 or 11. Oh. Um, and it wasn't until I was a little bit older and like I started going out and performing that I realized it was something that I really wanted to turn into a career. Um, not necessarily just like a hobby anymore. I wanted to take it a little bit more seriously, especially after I saw a few concerts for the first time when I was 15. Um, Paramore being one of them. Taste. A taste. Yeah. <laughs> and just like seeing Haley Williams on stage, just like absolutely destroying it. I, there was just like such a fire inside of my chest. And I knew that that was like something that I wanted to do. And, um, and so, yeah. And so I started like really taking it seriously in my late teens. And yeah, I've been doing it for a long, long time now. <laughs> All right. Solid. Well, okay. So congrats on your release. Three cheers for the American beauty. How do you Thank feel you. the response to it so far? Of course. Um, it is, it's been crazy. It's, it's been nice. It's been playlisted a lot on Spotify, which is always really helpful for streams and just to like get people interested in the project and, you know, especially people that maybe don't know who I am. Um, and yeah, it's, it's been awesome. I've been sitting on this project for like two years. So oh. yeah. <laughs> So I'm, I'm excited that it's finally out. I'm sort of like relieved slash excited. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's a kind of a weird time to release music right now, but it's so far it's been, it's been great. People have been awesome about it. You love to see it. Oh, is there a reason why you were sitting on it for two years? Was that just your writing process or was that just like, I think I just wanted to release it at the right time. It wasn't, okay. um, I don't know. I, I think at the time I felt like if I were to release it at that point in time, it it wouldn't have been as well received as now. Okay. Um, both, I think like financially and just like business wise, I wanted to release it at a right time. I wanted to release at a time that I was able to, you know, really afford to do the visuals the way I wanted to do it. Um, the videos the way I wanted to do them. And it's sort of happened to be around the same time that I feel like we have a lot of like political unrest mm -hmm. and like you know a lot of people a lot of people that are sort of like angry and are, are filled with rage right now and I, and I felt like this was the perfect time to release this specific EP because I wrote it at a time that I was feeling all of those things okay. um, so it, it, it wasn't like I intentionally released it at this time I it just sort of happened to be that way and happened to be like the perfect time for it <laughs> oh, wonderful all right uh so all of your titles and your name on spotify are all in caps uh, is there mm -hmm. any reasoning behind that um i just like how it looks honestly okay. yeah <laughs> all right i think yeah i think it looks really clean and cool and um i do like you know when i am added to a playlist that it's like right there as your it pops out yeah. yeah it pops out a lot more and also i think the songs are so energetic and so full of you know energy and life that um i really wanted the the titles of the songs to really uh, emulate that that sort of that sort of thing okay okay right. makes sense so what is your writing process like my writing process is different mm -hmm. every time i don't i don't usually have like a one way that i do anything sometimes okay. i'm writing with producers that have songs that are already completed or i'm sorry instrumentals that are already completed and i just write the top line which is the melody and the lyrics mm -hmm. and then other times i'm starting off from like a bass you know playing a bass and then building the song from there so um my biggest thing is i always write the music first before i write the song because the music itself really uh inspires a story um and i'm also very visual so when i hear something i can like almost like see the video for it and like build the story in my mind before i actually write the song that is so, so cool i guess the, if there's any process that would be the process and just like also a lot of like bubbly water and uh <laughs> and like maybe a little weed <laughs> okay great <All> combination <laughs> Sorry. Uh, <laughs> no, no, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Wait, I have to ask, what's your favorite like bubbly water flavor? Mm. Mm hmm. Great, great, great question, actually. Of course. Oh, yeah. Me, like these are the types of interviews that I want to do with the real question. <laughs> of course. Of course. We got the real what's questions. My favorite flavor. 
<laughs> we got the real question. What's your favorite flavor? <laughs> um, okay, so that's a hard one. Oh, God. It's the hardest I question we have. <laughs> it's in between. It's definitely in between Mandarin, which sounds Ooh. really weird. But Mandarin's the best. Mm-hmm. And uh, Pomplemus. I mean, you just got to go classic with mm-hmm. the LaCroix. Mm-hmm. It's definitely. actually pronounced LaCroix, I guess. So Are you serious? That. It's pronounced LaCroix. LaCroix? It's French, it's French LaCroix. That's yeah. why we never got that sponsorship, Glory, because you fuck up the name. <laughs> no. Oh, that's, that's disappointing. Um, so back to the boring questions. Uh, where was your headspace at while you were writing this EP? Um, you know, I was sort of, I was, I was in a time in my life where I was ridding myself of all this like conditioning and like uh, whether that be like social conditioning or like you know media programming. Um, I grew up fairly religious. I grew up uh, in a church that was like, you know, pretty strict. Um, I, so I, I sort of like grew up with this contorted idea of like what being a woman was and like what my role was in this world. And uh, I was sort of having like an existential crisis, but also like stepping into my power at the same time and realizing that like, you know, all these things that I've been told to be as a woman, um, whether that be, you know, from the church I grew up in, from my parents, or from just like what society is telling me, what the media is telling me that I should be. Um, I was sort of just like sick of all of it. And I wanted to, I wanted to finally have autonomy and like own my body, own who I am as a person. And I had so much to say and like so much rage, you know, yeah. <laughs> so much female rage just like boiling inside of me. And I just I needed to get it out. And so that's sort of what this EP was for me was this cathartic experience of not only stepping into my power, but ridding myself of all of the things that people have told me my whole life that I should be or that I can do, can't do all of that. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. That's like the biggest power move ever. <laughs> that's <For> huge. <laughs> wow. Okay. Uh, so what band or artist influence do you think you can hear on this EP, if any? Um, yeah, I mean, I grew up listening to a whole bunch of different types of, of music. I always tell people that um, I, I'm always, I'm very much in the moment when I'm making a project. Um, and I like to pull from very specific influences for things uh, because I feel like it, it sort of brings the idea all together in like a nice, like tight little package. Um, so like I've grown up listening to people like Lauren Hill and you know I've obviously like Britney Spears and like all of, of those course. people but at the same time I loved like Shirley Manson I loved Garbage I loved Hole I loved Nine Inch Nails I loved Rage Against the Machine and all of that and so when I was writing this project specifically I was sort of pulling more from those those influences um, but yeah I mean very 90s very like heavy content rage like but also like very cool, like female empowerment stuff too. Like I love Gwen Stefani and No Doubt. Mm -hmm. Um, And I feel like you can definitely hear some of those influences in the music. Definitely. All right. Uh, So what made you choose the name for the EP? And is there any meaning behind the cover art? Yeah, so I chose Three Cheers for the American Beauty uh, because I based the title off of the film American Beauty, which came out in 1999. and I was watching a lot of like dark comedies and black comedies at that point. I don't know if you've ever seen like Heather's or Jawbreaker. Mm, of course, or yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I, I sort of just wanted the EP to have that kind of feel. I wanted it to feel like a dark comedy in a way, a little bit campy. And so I thought that that title was like super cheeky and it sounded like sort of bitter and, um, and, I, it really inspired the the beauty pageant vibe for all the mm-hmm. other visuals uh, because I, I wanted there to sort of be this juxtaposition between this like really intense music and this like really girly, campy, you know, beauty mm-hmm. pageant vibe. Um, mm-hmm. And they, they both ended up working together so well. So it, it came out great. I'm really happy about it. Yeah. Uh-huh. All right. When I actually first heard the title, the first thing I thought of was uh, My Coming Romance's Three Cheers for Sweet Revenge and Fall Out Boy's uh, American Beauty, American Psycho. Was that, <laughs> did you think of that? Or... No, I didn't. I didn't. Oh. You know, I was never like, I liked uh, My Chemical Romance, but I was never like a huge fan of theirs. So mm-hmm. I, I wasn't actually familiar with that until people brought it up to me and they're like, oh yeah, you based it off of this, right? And I'm like, oh no, no. I no, totally. <laughs> didn't even know that existed. <laughs> <laughs> it's off of a movie, totally, totally separate thing. But it's funny, um, 
I found a lot of like similarities um, in a lot of like other rock projects and stuff that people brought to my attention. And I was like, oh, well, it just seems natural then, you know, that it, that it came to me like that. Definitely. Yeah. All right. So we noticed that each single that you released actually had a different person on the cover. Do they represent anything? Yeah, so each song on the EP um, represents a different, I guess, societal pressure or conditioning that I had to rid myself of. And mm-hmm. so in order to make that come across in a visual representation, I wanted it to be a different girl for each thing that I sort of rid myself of. Mm-hmm. Um, and then on top of that, I have a, a whole list of like short stories that I'm writing that I, I'm going to attach to the EP. Um, and that, that stuff should like roll out sometime next year um, and each song on the EP works as the soundtrack for each of these stories and so each of those girls have their own individual story um, but yeah it's it's kind of like an anti-hero sort of like revenge story for each girl okay. that is so cool okay Galaxy wow. brain up in here <laughs> I know right <laughs> um <laughs> So what song took the longest to write on the CP and what is your personal favorite? What song took the longest to write? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oof, that, that's hard. That's hard to say because we wrote the whole EP in like nine days. So I, I'm not really sure which one took the longest, but even if it was the longest, it didn't take that long at all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I would say maybe Paper Cut. That one was a little bit more of a heavy song. I mean, obviously you can hear it. Like the lyrics are very, are sort of like, are sort of heady and um i wrote that one with trent dabbs who's an an amazing writer in nashville and uh yeah that one was a little more complicated because we wanted to kind of think of this idea of being a broken person wanting to be in love with someone wanting to be in a relationship but realizing that when you're in that relationship you know you're bringing that other person down but still doing it anyways and so it was a really complicated story that we thought of in our heads um so that one definitely took a little bit longer to sort of like weed out and, and get it out correctly okay. um and my favorite off mm-hmm. of the ep is probably talking to me definitely mm-hmm. taste all right so yeah definitely talking to me just because that's the one that i think i like performing live the most <laughs> okay <laughs> makes sense it's just really energetic and it, it was very much like what i was at that point in my life like just don't don't fuck with me Mm -hmm. type of shit yeah yeah (laughs) i love it i love it so (laughs) how did you choose the track list for the ep did you like take hours to kind of piece it all together or did you just kind of shuffle it and say oh yeah that looks fun yeah i mean i like i like building dynamics um especially when you're listening from like beginning to end. Uh, So yeah, that's sort of how I built it. I built it with like crash diving first and having it sort of be this like acoustic moment in the beginning and then it hits the energy and then slows down sort of in the middle of the EP a little bit to kind of give you a break from all of that like high energy stuff and then brings you right back up again to to talking to me and baby doll and and giving you that energy again. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, so is there a certain feeling you want your listeners to have while listening to the CP? Yeah, I mean, I, I hope that it makes people feel empowered. Um, I I felt really empowered when I was writing it. I mean, prior to writing this music, I was doing pop music, and it was uh, very unfulfilling. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, I just felt like it didn't allow me the space to say what I really wanted to say and and sort of showcase my talent in the way that I thought was best. Um I, I sort of felt like I had to like stay within a certain parameter uh, or certain parameters or like I had to fit myself into a little box when I was writing pop music and, and trying to do that whole thing. Um, and so this EP for me, was like a big moment to be able to just like let go of everything, all of my inhibitions, like not care what anyone else thinks about it, just making something that really feels good to me and sounds good to me. Um, and yeah. I hope I answered your question. I feel like I got a little yeah. lost on that. Oh one. yeah, you did. No, you did. You did for sure. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> you answered it in the beginning there, and then got kind of lost, and then wrapped it back up. So yeah, you yeah. did. You tied it all yeah. together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Solid. <laughs> We're doing so, it Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> oh my god. Um. So this should go like super, super fast. I want you to describe this EP in three words. In three words. Three words. Okay. As fast as you can. Can they be like hyphenated words? 
Sure. Sure. As fast sure. as I can. Sure. Okay, as fast as I can. All right. No, wait. Sorry, I forgot about that rule. Um. Okay. <laughs> Rage. Um. Energy. Uh. Bratty. Ooh. Okay. I like that one. That's really. Oh my god, that fits it very well. I thought it would have been perfect if you just went rage against and then hyphenated the machine. The machine. (laughs) You heard that too, okay. (laughs) Um, So I know you just dropped the CP, but are you working on anything new aside from those short stories you told us about? Mm -hmm. Yes, I am. I'm I'm writing writing new music for another EP uh, Mm. that I have hopefully coming out really next year. I, this one has got more of like an Orwellian tone to it. Um, I, I'm definitely going to find a way to make it as interactive as, as the CP was. Uh, and while I'm building out still the storyline from the CP. So hopefully I'll be doing two at the same time. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I also like I have other side projects as well um, that I'm really excited about. One of them is called Glitterbot. It's sort of this like out of the box like out of the box pop alternative stuff um Ooh. with some like hip hop elements and uh and some like rap elements um and th- that's that's doing really well i just landed like the apple watch commercial for that one so oh, nice. you know building out on that on that side of things um and then i have a whole nother project coming out as well another side project so i'm gonna be very busy next year i am i know i'm gonna be so stressed but i don't even care i like to abuse myself <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so you have like so many side projects and you know side things that you're working on how are you managing to balance all of them and still put out good stuff ah that is the question <laughs> um i have no idea <laughs> oh okay. just luck maybe i'm just yeah. i'm really just going for it no um you know what i think it helped a lot when i decided like at one point in my life i just decided to just stop caring about what i thought i was supposed to be doing and like what I thought other people wanted me to do and expected of me, even down to an artist level, you know, having all of these different projects that that are in these different genres. Like I, I know that that would be confusing for people normally, but I, I sort of I sort of just stopped caring about that. And I, I just want to be the best artist that I can be in whatever way, shape or form that is. I, I, and I don't want to put myself in a box. So um for me, I'm just walking into these sessions and I'm writing songs that make me happy, that I love, that are either like funny or that I think are cool or that I think really embody who I am as a person. And I, I think that's why the outcome is always is always good. The music always comes out good because I'm going into it honest and with authenticity. And I feel like as long as I'm doing that, I'll be able to, you know, sort of juggle everything. And if I can't juggle it, you know, then I guess we'll see what happens. <laughs> but, All right. Yeah. But I mean, I'm a hard worker, so I I hope that I can uh, I hope that I can keep it all balanced. For yeah. Sure. Solid. Right. So, where do you see the project in the next five years? In the next five years, mm-hmm. um, I mean, I just hope it keeps growing. I hope that you know more people have their eyes on it, and uh, I'm not interested in things like it's it, it's kind of like a uh, it's so hard to explain i mean i'm not interested in things like fame <laughs> you know mm-hmm. i'm i'm a very private person i like i like my privacy um i don't like feeling like i'm a slave to people mm-hmm. um and so for me i feel like that's sort of like what fame is um so i think in 5 years i mean if i could just continue to build my career in this industry um and release music that that people love and you know maintain that as as a career that's paying my bills and is affording me a lifestyle that i'm that i'm happy with which is very simple you know i'm not i'm not looking for anything crazy um i think that's where i I would want to be in five years yeah okay i respect that i like that uh so for the last couple questions we're actually going to shift away from music and go straight to death row so if you're on death row what would your last meal be with a drink with a drink that's a Mm -hmm. great question Oh my Thank god! You. Wow. Okay, so I don't know if you guys have you guys ever had like boiling crab or angry I'm not crab? a crab person, but <laughs> not oh, sure, sure, <laughs> sure. For this we have. Sure, for this one I have. Either, but okay. um, no, I I love this place called Boiling Crab, and basically what they do is they stick 
like snow crab legs into uh-huh. a plastic bag and they put like Cajun Creole Ooh. like sauce in it and they like yeah. shake it up. Um, and then you just sit there and like destroy the crab legs and it's, <laughs> it's, 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 yeah, it's inhumane, but, um, <laughs> uh, I would probably great. do that like some sort of like Cajun Creole crab and then mm-hmm. put the drink. Oh my God. Definitely like a martini or something. Okay. Ooh, okay. Oh no 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 mezcal on the rocks. <laughs> All right. Okay. Solid. <laughs> so if you could live in one fiction world for a week, where would you live? One fiction world? Fictional world, yeah. <sighs> That's a good one. That can be any fictional world. Mm-hmm. Oh man. Oh man, that's a good one. God, you guys stumped me with these questions. Thank we you. got the good questions. Exactly. You really do. <laughs> you really do. Honestly, I get asked the same questions all the time. So this is great. Um, oh. let's, let's see. Uh, fictional world. Lizzie McGuire, probably. Ooh. Okay. I don't think okay. we've ever gotten that one before. Yeah, so. no, we haven't. Yeah. yeah. I right. would totally, I would beat the shit out of that Kate girl. <laughs> the worst i'd be like oh you want to be a bully not mm-hmm. today no i don't we have a week to do it that said that. oh <laughs> okay you're like oh well too late <laughs> um so i have the honor of asking the last question and every single person we've spoken to has says the most important question and some say it's harder than the bubbly water question glory mm-hmm. gave you earlier uh oh, no. okay. what is your favorite color what is my favorite color emerald Ooh. okay yeah like like, emerald. like a real like emerald green like a dark emerald green I that's probably know. my favorite color it's a very good color that is yeah i so. like i like the woods and like trees and all of mm-hmm. that so that's sort of my color profile all right mm-hmm. i respect that <laughs> uh, so as glory said or as i said as you shit, said yeah uh, that is all the questions <laughs> we have today is there anything you'd like to plug is there anything I would like to plug? Um, I don't know, my my Instagram, I guess. I'm the most active on Instagram, so my Instagram is at it's Luna Aura. Um, someone else had my name. Oh, nice. you know, it's just yeah. how, how how it rolls. Um, <laughs> no, uh, yeah, I'm I'm definitely most active on that. And then if you go to lunaauramusic.net you can see sort of the synopsis for the stories that are going to come out, as well as hear all of the music. And I just dropped a whole bunch of new merch uh, three days ago. So you guys want to go support a broke artist? <laughs> Do it. Hell yeah. Because she broke. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, that's where we're going to end it. Uh, thank you for sitting out with us. This has been Luna Aura and uh, we're the Good Noise Podcast. <laughs>